Yes, we should not plug this in, right? Yeah, they take a lot of care.
Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we will talk about the project application review process today. How you can publish projects on Drupal.org. This is not a developer session. This is not a site builder session. This is more an uh, organization, organizational kind of session where we talk about how we work on Drupal.org, how contributors can contribute the code, how the process works out. Not recording? So, looks good. We are still okay. We are recording already, so I can continue. Uh, who are we? Uh, my name is Klaus Bura or Klausi on Drupal.org. I'm from Austria. I work with Drupal for about four years. I'm a Drupal developer not really a theme or such, more module development. Um, I worked for a small company in Austria called Epico. We're doing online job boards and the recruiter distribution. I'm also a code review administrator. We talk about that later. That means that I have the permission to grant others the right to publish their projects on Drupal.org. I'm a Google Summer of Code mentor. Yeah, that's basically it. Hi, my name is Patrick. I just started Drupal one year ago and I pretty soon got stuck in the application queue. Is, is this good? The sound is okay. Um, well, I'm working for Maloon and I'm also a project application administrator and my Drupal.org name is Patrick D. Yeah. Okay. So you might wonder, how can you actually contribute code on Drupal.org? <laughs> so uh, one fundamental concept on Drupal.org are sandboxes. Sandboxes are Git repositories that have a project page and a full issue tracker that everybody can use for free. So this is the good message. If you have code, if you have you developed a module and you want to contribute back, you can start right now by pushing it to a sandbox and where you can collaborate with others, you can manage your project with the issue tracker and so on. Just register on Drupal.org, um, click the uh, confirmation that you will only publish uh, GPL version 2 code because that's uh, required on Drupal.org and then you can start creating your sandboxes. There's also a lot of documentation um, where you can read that up, how you can do that. It's quite simple, everybody can do it. That's what a typical sandbox looks like. Um, the, it has a not so shiny URL, which is tied to the username with a unique identifier. Uh, it has the term sandbox in the title so that people know it as an experimental project. Um, and that's, that's one fundamental thing about sandboxes. They are considered experimental. They are not verified project. Mostly there is new code in them. You should use them with caution if you are deploying that code on a production site. You'd, you should verify yourself that it actually works and that it does what it's supposed to do. And it has no downloadable releases, as you can see. There is only the Git URL very prominently placed on the project page um, so that developers can easily download the module, but it's not intended for end users, for site builders that are just looking around. You have to know what you're doing when you are using a sandbox on your Drupal site. Uh, on the contrary, we have full projects on Drupal.org. I'm sure you have seen those. Fuse, for example, is a full project, or Drupal itself is a full project on Drupal.org. And a full project is basically a sandbox, and it has some additional gimmicks. For example, it has a nice project URL where the, the module short name or the theme short name is used in a URL. Um, it has package releases for download, so it is uh, specifically intended to be used by end users. It is also favored in search results, and full projects are uh, considered to be healthy and maintained, and everybody expects that critical bugs or security issues or whatever gets fixed in a timely fashion. So that is, it is really considered something community supported. And I'm sure you have seen that. Um, that's a typical project page of a full project on Drupal.org. The path is slash project slash the short name of the module or the theme rules in this example. It has, most of the time, it has stable release published that you can download in a tarball. It 
in many times it also has development releases where you can grab the latest uh, nightly slap snapshot of the repository. And it has user statistics, which sandboxes have not because they are not tracked by the Drupal update XML system. So you can see how often is this module used, how often has it been downloaded, and so on. So that's about it for full projects. The thing about full projects, uh, they are not for free. And there's a reason to that. Um, there are several problems with um, the idea that we should give full project just to anyone. First, there's the problem of namespace squatting because you know the internet, it's full of spammers. If we would give full projects away for free, people would just uh, reserve the name. Um, uh, we would um, run out of short names um, very soon, so modules would, would get very long names and so on. Um, another thing why we uh, want to hold back things a little for, for a full project is uh, our licensing issu issues because Drupal.org is GPL version 2 only or everything that's compatible to GPL version 2. So uh, we need to protect the Drupal Association, the legal body of Drupal.org from any issues that might arise when there is copyright infringement or whatever. Uh, another important thing for Drupal's reputation is, of course, security. We expect from full project that they are basically secure. Of course, security issues uh, can always happen, and they do, and we have uh, a process in place that deals with that issues. But in general, we consider that the developers that work on that module know what they are doing, and they are familiar with security best practices so that everybody can safely use the project. So we want to make sure that full project, before they are released, um, have secure code in them. Another problem, and I assume you have uh, all stumbled uh, upon that one, is project duplication on Drupal.org. Um, we need to make sure that we do not fragment our community in forks of basically the same project. We always emphasize the notion, notion of collaboration over competition. We want people to work together. We don't want them to fork uh, a project for a minor reason. Of course, if you're a new contributor, you think you can do everything on your own and you have your idea, you can do it right and nobody else can, but we have to um, just push people in the direction of working together and to not duplicate what's already there. And we also want to make sure of code quality and best practices because every full project on Drupal.org is might get copied because people learn from full project, they use them, they modify them, so we want to have a good code, code quality in them and we also want them to use best practices, how, Drupal, how the Drupal API should be used. And another problem are abandoned projects. We already have a lot of abandoned projects on Drupal.org because the maintainers have moved on, do not have time anymore to maintain the project. And if we would open the floodgates and would allow everybody to create full projects, we would get a lot of abandoned projects where people just dump their code and move on and it would be even harder to find the right modules for your Drupal project. So what do we do? Um, we want full projects and we want high quality code, so we have a process in place. That's the project review process. And that works like this. Um, there's a permission on Drupal.org that we can assign to users so that they are able to uh, publish full projects. This is a one-time approval process, so if you have a new module, you go to the issue queue. The issue queue is uh, drupal.org slash project slash project application, which we use to manage those uh, applications. And you bring the, basically you bring the new project and we bring the reviews. Uh, so we want to make sure that you have a basic understanding of Drupal. And when you are through that, you, uh, you get the git vetted user role. That's the permission or the user role on drupal.org. So you are able to promote any sandbox of yours to a full project. So. The sandbox is the pre preliminary step. You can publish all the code in Drupal.org in a sandbox. It just says that it's experimental, and then you get the permission, and then you are a verified member, and you can publish your code in a full project manner. And an important note here, if you want to collaborate on an existing project, if you want to help maintain views, for example, uh, the maintainer of views can add you as maintainer. So you don't have to go through this process. It's only for new projects when new full projects should come out. So maintainers can manage themselves if, if they want to add people as maintainers to their project. Exactly. 
They don't have to have the git vetted user role. They can be just normal Drupal.org users. They just have to accept the licensing terms before they can commit any code. And that's it. And then you can commit to views if you have been accepted as maintainer without any approval process. So that's that. And what happens next, your application is then sitting there in the uh, issue queue and people will re review a project. And everything, and if everything went well, a code review administrator like me or Patrick or Mike, who is sitting here, uh, will approve your project and you get a vetted user role and then you can move on to full projects. There's also a list of people that um, are responsible um, for that approval process, which is listed on groups.drupal.org. I put the link here. You can download the slides after this session and uh, look it up yourself. So there's a basic workflow in place. You all know the Drupal org issue queues. Um, an issue has a state, and we use that state to uh, express um, some certain condition that apply currently to an uh, application. For example, needs, re needs review means that the application is ready to be reviewed by regular Drupal.org reviewers. Um, the needs work state is used if there are problems with the application, licensing issues, a security hole, whatever. So that uh, signals to the maintainer of that sandbox, hey, you need to correct that before we can publish that as, as full project. And in the end, a reviewer marks that as review and test, reviewed and tested by the community. So if there are no issues left and the reviewer is confident that this can be published, it gets this state and then the code review administrators like us step in and approve that. Or bump it back to needs work if we find an uh, issue for whatever reasons. And the close states, if an application uh, goes through it, it is marked as fixed. If an application is not um, appropriate for whatever reason, it is marked as won't fix. And we also have the duplicate state because we want persons to uh, submit only one project at a time because we already have a huge load of applications coming in. So we want to have only one application per person and we mark other applications of the same person as duplicate. That's basically it. The workflow is documented. You can also look that up. Yes, some benefits for reviewing applications. You might be wondering why are they doing this? What, what can you take away from that? When I started reviewing applications, I think in September or October last year, uh, I really got a huge learning experience. You learn Drupal because you look at other pe other people's code. You learn how they do things. You learn about alternative ways to uh, solve specific problems. You learn how to analyze foreign code. That's uh, a very important skill that you gain. And you, of course, you learn to uh, write secure code because you see what other reviewers find and you see how they identify security issues in modules, which is really a great gain to be a better Drupal developer. And of course, you learn about uh, best and worst practices. You see what, what people do very in an elegant way and you see what people are doing really wrong. And of course, you tell them about it, and yes, you, you get to know common patterns, how modules can go wrong and what is wrong with them. And of course, you stay on top of what is new and hard. You see um, what is missing in Drupal, what ideas people come up with, how they want to improve Drupal by modules, for example, how they develop their responsive base themes or whatever. It's really cool to see um, the, the, the way forward and what the new ideas that come up with new contributors. And in the end, you get a lot of karma, of course, for helping and mentoring others. You can make a name for yourself. You, uh, you're well known in the Drupal community and um, you can use that for your own projects to promote your own projects or um, getting better feedback for your patches or whatever. For sure, we cannot simply um, review modules by random. We need a system to do this and to make sure that our, the important points are always checked. And we've spent a lot of time to um, implement a good review checklist. And you can see the main points up there. It's basically first check if there is a similar module, module avail available. And if it is, ask the, the, the applicant whether how it compares to the existing module, is it really necessary to duplicate it and, uh, it, and if it's obviously a full functional duplicate, then close the issue. Then also, um, we only allow one application per user. That's because 
we have a very very high workflow already and we can't just have anyone 10 applications waiting in the queue and let's see which one gets fixed first that simply doesn't work out so we first have to make sure that one user really only one has one application then many new users are also new to git that means that some of them don't know how to push um, code onto their Git repository. Some of them even don't know how to create a sandbox and they simply create an application issue. So we have to make sure that um, code is actually there to review and that they're using the correct um, names for branching and tagging. Other issues are a custom license that text it's not necessary to add your own license to text because it's added automatically by the packer. Um, and third party stuff, as Klausi said, it's only a P GPL version 2 allowed. Well, um, what's often underestimated while reviewing projects is the, the documentation of the project. Does, uh, does the project page contain good? good information, how to install it, how to use it, and there should also be a readme available because you, the most users of these modules will be site builders and site builders are mostly no developers and they have to understand what this module is doing without looking into the code. And the second and most important point is that you are securely and correctly using the Drupal APIs and for sure you have no security issues in your code but sometimes can be hard for new reviewers but the admins at least will have a deep check on this. Yes, um, we said it already, um, security is an, a very important issue for a new project and the most common issue that we see is cross-site scripting or XSS, which you see in this uh, picture is the, the biggest part of that pie, and which means dealing with user-supplied text is dealing with a bomb, basically, because Drupal stores user-supplied text um, unsanitized, and if you print it out, you need to defuse that bomb, so to speak. And most people forget that there can be glitches where they're not doing it uh, correctly, and if that user supply text gets printed without sanitization, there might be script tags in it, and then JavaScript would be executed, and information could be leaked, or the account could be taken over, or the session cookie could be sent elsewhere, whatever. So that's the most common issue that we see. From time to time, there are unprotected menu paths in modules. That's an example for commerce modules that integrate with some payment gateway, for example, where the payment gateway calls back to Drupal and often that uh, page callback is unprotected with no permission. And then you have to be careful what you are doing in your page callback. You have to make sure that this is a valid request from the payment gateway and not something other that a hacker might attempt to send at that path. So I've seen uh, some issues of that. Of course, please use the form API because uh, when users uh, are submitting data, we need to be careful what how we validate that and how we use that. People are often using the PHP Super Globals, dollar post, for example, which they should not do. They should use the form API. We see some cross-site request forgery, which means um, you are executing an action on a get request. So somebody just visits a page and some random stuff gets executed that is not allowed in Drupal because somebody could trick you into clicking that link or following that link and an action is executed on your behalf, which you might not have intended. So. We also see access bypass on any front, so every, everywhere where user privileges are escalated where they shouldn't, shouldn't have been. And what is very rare nowadays is SQL injection because people are mostly um, contributing Drupal 7 modules right now. There are very few Drupal 6 modules. And in Drupal 7 we have the database API which takes good care of SQL injection, so that is really rare now. There's also uh, documentation on Drupal.org for writing secure code. Please read it. It's really helpful information how to deal with uh, user-supplied text and so on. Um, another important aspect I want to mention is mentoring of new applicants. Of course, 
those are new contributors. They are new to Drupal, they are new to the contributed world, and we need to take care of them. We need to take care that they don't turn away. We need to support them in the way of, crea of creating a full project, which means we need to give them links to resources. It's always good when people can inform themselves. So providing good links is really um, a task for reviewing an application or suggesting alterna alternative solutions, more efficient solutions to applicants. It really can open their eyes when they see uh, what exactly they did wrong and how it can be done correctly, and they are also eager to solve that issues. Of course, clear instructions are important, so where exactly is the problem? How should it be solved? Where can you learn more about that? Yeah, um, the more specific you are, the better for the applicants. And of course, we need to provide help and encouragement to applicants because, as I said, Drupal is growing. Drupal talent is missing, as Dre said uh, yesterday in his keynote. And we want those new contributors. We, want we don't want them to turn away. So it's important to talk to them in an encouraging manner. Yeah. So from my point of view, what do I do when I look at project applications? Um, First, uh, I check the review bonus list. I'll talk about the review bonus system a bit later. Then I check the RTPC issues because I'm uh, a Git administrator. I can approve people, so I look at the RTPC issues. Then I walk down to the critical issues that didn't get a response in a long time. And then I do some random reviews here and there and look after the issue queue that it is in a good shape. Yeah, that's basically it. I'm basically introducing new applicants into the queue and mostly approving um, the oldest RTBC issues because there are a lot of them already. And a lot more, uh, there are oldest applications. There are many new reviewers who come in and review the newest applications, but I highly recommend to review the oldest ones because there are people really waiting for months. And Generally, we both giving support and cheering up desperate applicants. Yeah. <laughs> it's reviewed and tested by the community. It's a state in the queue that indicates this application has been looked at, no problems have been found, we can move on with it. Hello, administrators, please take a look at this. I think it's ready. Correct. Exactly. So the issue queue is located on Drupal.org. It is just reused. A normal, it is a normal project page that is used as this application issue queue, and there we manage the, the applications. Yes, uh, certainly. Just raise your hands if you have any questions. And it's even better if you go to the microphone. Oh, directly yeah. speaking. I think we are not that many. I was just going to comment that the five year application is a lot of work and the application is a lot of five. And then it takes quite a while to get on. Yes, exactly. So the comment was that there are 500 open issues right now, but not, of, not all of them are waiting for review. There are a lot of issues that need a response from a maintainer of the sandbox. And there are approximately 100 open issues that really need review. We get to the Point actual state now. right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the queue, unfortunately, oh, no, another question. So my question would be, uh, if I submit a new project, how can there be an issue queue already? Because it's new. Um, every project has an issue queue. It's the every sandbox has its own issue queue without being promoted. But um, the a project application is a project which has an issue queue where you should submit your application to. So you create a new issue in the queue of the project application project. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. So the command was that it's it's an issue to get the actually the, the git vetted user role. So the project applications issue queue has no code in it. It's not a code project. It's just a, a way to manage applications. We're just reusing the, the project tools that are in Drupal.org uh, to organize the applications. That's it. Exactly. Yes. 
So the command was that in an application issue, there's a link to the user submits the, e the application, there's a link to the sandbox, there's a short description what that user wants to accomplish with the module, and then it, it waits there for review. Yeah. Um, please come to the microphone. Yeah, Thanks. we're recording this, so either I have to re repeat the question or you can speak yourself to the microphone. Um, what, what's a reasonable um, time to expect someone to review an application? Um, you know, if I submit it, do I wait a couple of days or do I wait a couple of weeks and it's still considered appropriate? Because I don't want to start bothering um, uh, the reviewers. So uh, that depends on your application. There are certain incentives that you can do so that your project gets reviewed uh, earlier, like the review bonus system. I get back to that in a couple of minutes. Um, you can, of course, raise your priority of your issue. If you're waiting for two weeks, you can raise it to major. If you're waiting for four weeks, you can raise it to critical. So then it's more likely that you get a review. Okay, well, it won't you. help you much to make it critical. <laughs> 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 it won't help. <laughs> yes. That that's an uh, uh, actually an important command. Drupal needs my module. Uh, you need to, you need to good you need to do good things and talk about them. If you promote your project on your own and you get people to know, they will of course stop by at the issue queue and review it because they have an interest that it gets promoted to a full project. So. Okay. Any questions left? Yes. Not, yeah. not just us. We are just the administrators who say, oh yes, the reviews went fine, now we can approve it, but other people are doing the reviews. So we really rely on regular reviewers that stop by and chip in. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then if the administrator detects that that review wasn't really a review, then yeah, it's not a good image for the reviewer themselves. And we, we didn't have actually any problems with that. Most reviews are quite okay. So there are no just setting something to RTBC without any review. It works out pretty well, I think. Yeah. Anything left? Okay. So as we see, the queue has some issues. And the current status of the queue is there are about 100 applications waiting for a, re for a review. And there are 1,800 overall applications, and there are three to four new ones per day. So that's pretty much. On the other side, only one per day gets approved, if it's a good day. <laughs> and 111 of them have still security issues, so you can see that the, the whole process really is makes sense, and it's really necessary to check this. And the obvious problem is that we have a huge, really huge lack of active reviewers, which leads to very long des response times, very desperate applicants, and um, quite bad reputation to potential new Drupal developers because they are simply mad about how long this, this time takes to simply approve this project. And yes, the only solution for this is we need more people doing regular reviews. And we need even more automation and we need clear documentation. So the question is, how many reviewers do we need? Well, minimum one, but that's very long response times. Um, currently, we have three to four, five around and still long response times, still very desperate applicants. It would be sustainable if we had at least six to 10 people doing regular reviews. It would be super awesome if 10 people of you in here would start reviewing applications now and we would have a wonderful short response time and a very good reputation for new developers. Yeah. Now that was a bit negative, let's talk about some accomplishments and how we improved that process uh, in the recent months and years. First, uh, we have introduced automated review tools to the queue and that has really revolutionized the process. 
Uh, the result of that is that we have almost no coding standard issues anymore in new uh, projects. People are able to use correct Git branch names. They have comments on every function, so the code is well documented, the coding standards are in place, so that the code that comes in from new contribut is contributors is really easy to read and understand and written in a Drupal way. And many details more that are detected by those automa automated review tools. And the good thing about it, um, if I go in in the issue queue and I be nitpicky about your module and I say a, missing, a comma is missing here and the comment is missing here, uh, people will take that personally. And the good thing about robots and automated review tools is that people just accept anything they tell them. Or they hate them. A, a report is coming out and they take it for granted and they fix it and there is no problem. So that's really cool and we can focus in our reviews really on a function of the module and can provide feedback on that. And we don't have to point out all those tiny coding standard errors or whatever. So the, the comment was that the speed of the, the review of the automated robot, it can spit out a huge report at one time and not repeating those nitpicky comments all the time from, from real human people. Another question? I'll get to that on the next slide. <laughs> yeah. So that the question was how that works out technically. And we are using some programs that analyze the source code of new projects. First, there is the classic module coder. You maybe heard of it, which uses regular expressions to find coding standard errors and security issues in Drupal modules. Unfortunately, it has a lot of false positives that really confuse applicants. And they fix things that are not false. So they are check planning. Uh, they, they are sanitizing text variables that are not user supplied text, so it doesn't make sense to sanitize them. Then a better approach is Drupal Code Sniffer, which we use a lot. It, is, it uses a parser engine to analyze the source code and re it reports um, issues to that. And it's based on PHP Code Sniffer where we can reuse existing rules and it's really convenient. It works independent of Drupal, so you can run it, for example, in your private Git repository automatically when you're pushing commits or whatever. There's also the PA review shell script, which I wrote to do the basic Git checks, to, to clone the project, to analyze the source code. It's basically just a wrapper around Drupal code sniffer and coder. And what Patrick did is really awesome. He took that script to his, to his server and published it on ventral.org, where you can just submit a Git URL to a repository and we would just batch it and process the code and spit out a full report of what is uh, going wrong with your code. So that's really awesome and everybody can submit uh, repositories, repositor repositories there and get reports from that and fix them on their own. So that is that. Uh, so how do you avoid the long response times? Um, what I introduced is the review bonus system. So the problem is the lack of reviewers and what I see is a possible solution is that applicants become reviewers because Let's be honest, they are just Drupal developers like you and me, just that they don't have that much experience, but they basically know what they're doing, they're familiar with Drupal, so they can review other projects. And the thing is, they re review three other project applications and they can add a special tag to their own application so that I know, aha, uh -huh, this person has helped other people, so now it's on my high priority list to look at that code and to approve it and to move it forward. So if you want to avoid long response times, just help others and I'll be at your service. There are some improvements planned to directly integrate on Drupal.org to enhance the whole process itself. First of all, we want to integrate the automated review service completely on Drupal.org so they don't have to go to an external site and submit it manually every time. And we want to make sure that the workflow is followed so that if the issue is created, that automated review can no, can be not less than six X errors and RTBC issues are also approved after a number of weeks. And Jeremy already um, implemented some of this stuff in a sandbox, which is really cool, but can't be um, pushed into Drupal.org live yet. 
And we're really looking forward to this and we heard of many applicants that they are really waiting for these features to have on Drupal.org and to make it easier for them and for us. Yeah. There are several other ideas for improvements. Many of them also came from applicants themselves. For example, this one came from, from Klausi and he said, let's make review bonus mandatory. So if you want to get through the, through the process, you have to review three other applications. Unfortunately, it turns out that many, many applicants simply don't have the time to do this. And therefore, it's not yet official. There are um, issue queue free shows, which means that we should not longer than four weeks wait for a project to be finished. And we also think about um, having a, a really reviewed team. At the moment, there's no real government and on this whole thing. It's just, do you want to make reviews? Yes, then do it. But there's no real team that you can say, hey, these are the people who really regularly do the reviews likes in the documentation team where even leaders are defined. Then there's also often a problem that there are very specific um, applications like um, commerce plugins. And I personally don't have very much, um, I don't know very much about commerce and how to integrate with it. So the idea was to add tags to the, to the applications that um, show people who know something about commerce that this is the a issue that they could look at. So really experts um, can do reviews on things that they know about. Unfortunately, that's not really working out yet because <laughs> simply experts are not looking into the application queue. <laughs> and also often proposed was that we are separating the improvement of modules, themes, and features, because themes and modules are not really the same, especially when it's about security and the correct API usage. So it would be a solution to, to simply separate this to make sure that a theme developer don't create a, a module with, with security issues one year later, because you never he never was told how this works, really. There's yes. a question. So how could there be a mandatory review bonus for new developers? So if I submit for the first time, how can I earn a, a review bonus by reviewing other modules? Because I'm new to that, how can I review them? So oh, it was recorded, so I don't have to repeat it. Um, there's extensive documentation on Drupal.org. There's the simple checklist that you can use to, to check out other people's code. It's not that hard. You just open the code files. You can either look, the, look at them in your browser with the Git repository browser on Drupal.org, or you can just clone the project, take a look at the code, and what you find is good. And if you find nothing, it's totally OK to set it to RTBC, which says, I have not found any issues, and this can move forward. So nobody will, will shout at you if you have not seen an, an issue, for example, that might turn out later but getting started with reviewing other applications definitely needs some time. You need some practice with it, and you have to do it more oftenly. But what's the cool thing about this is by reviewing other applications, you really learn many new things. And it's simply, if we demand from applicants that they need to review other modules, we can make even sure that these applicants are really knowing what they're doing because they're showing it to us in their reviews. Another question? So the question was that mathematically, if there are more reviews than application problem, we never had that problem. <laughs> that's, that's a very es 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 esoteric discussion. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 haven't, we haven't decided anything about making it required. We're just leaving it as is right now. Yeah. So that's also uh, another point about feedback and governance. 
we've done some um, surveys about how applicants think about the process and these are the, the, the comments that they most often showed up with and many said they had often thought about giving up others said the review bonus, bonus helped me getting through within a week hey <laughs> the long response times are very frustrating and we also very often heard that the process in r is really good and I appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> and if we ask them what should be changed, then we mostly had having more reviewers is essential for sustainable response times. Yeah, we also think this. And more automation directly on Drupal.org. Yeah. Reviewers should be less picky. Oh. <laughs> well, sorry. Um, that's often a problem and um, we're already trying to not be too picky on especially on coding style and but we simply have to be picky on security and API misuse misuse misusage issues so bear with us and sometimes we often heard that sometimes we often well sometimes we heard that the documentation should be more cohesive and less duplicating meaning that many of the documentation is spread over several nodes and it's many duplicating information on them and it's a mass of text to read for new applicants. So what they do, nothing. They don't read any of the docu documentation, simply create an application and, and we wonder how <laughs> this could happen. And we're really planning to work on this and we're looking forward to anyone who wants to help us. Yeah, and others thought that it shouldn't change at all. Yeah, yeah something a bit uh, about review process governance. Uh, well, who decides what we are doing in the queue and who decides what we are accepting and who decides how this workflow should go? Well, we all do. We have a code review group. That's the name of the of a group on groups.drupal.org and we do discussions there and we do some decision making there and this process that we currently have is still evolving. We're planning to do more automation. We're always thinking about how we can enhance it to so that we have less, uh, um, not that long response times and in the end we all work it out together how Drupal.org should work. Often there are comments we should just enhance sandboxes so that they have downloadable release that would be enough for some applicants. But on the other hand, we don't want that because the sandboxes are considered experimental and we don't want to mix that up. So, yeah, we, we, we can figure it out together and discuss how we should move forward. Yes, there's a question. Yes. Project needed process. So th the the comment was that we might have a, a wish list of modules that do not exist, but we might like to have, and then new contributors can step in and fulfill the task, and then it's it's as it is a desired feature, it would get the re it would get the, the reviews uh, sooner and it would be a better process. Yes, that might be an idea. Yeah. But the question is who maintains that wish list and so on. I think if, so, if somebody steps up and would like to do something like that, I th it wouldn't be an issue. I think it would be very much appreciated. Yeah. So some next steps. Of course, we are always recruiting. So if you have five minutes of time, 10 minutes of time, take a look at the project application HTQ. And if you find something interesting, if you see a module that or a theme that needs review, just take a look at the code if you, and if you think it's sane and it does not violate anything that you have seen in Drupal.org, mark it as RTBC. And we will really ap appreciate your help. It helps to keep this process going. And we are finishing the Drupal.org Drupal, Drupal 7 migration. Um, so because we don't want to build tools for Drupal 6 right now, 
Um, we want to wait until this is on Drupal 7 so that we don't waste our time implementing something. And we, of course, have to revisit our automation plans. What rules exactly do we want to implement for the project application HQ, how it should work? We will have to make plans for that. And then in the end, we will implement that and publish that on Drupal.org so that we don't need the uh, external service for automated reviews that we have, for example, an automated security issue review. Yes, and so forth. We also had a lot of thinking about how could we attract reviews. And some of the ideas we come up is that we do regular application review sprints. Join us on Friday. We are really we, we would really like to see any one of you there and join us to review a project applications. It's not like, hey, we take you and say, now you review, we really want to help you. If you need an instruction how to review, we, we can show you. We really want more people doing reviews. So if you are any interested, then please come and ask. It's really open. The location will be on the just the usual code sprint on Friday. I don't know if it's here on the venue or somewhere else. I think it's on it's on the DrupalCon website. You can just click on sprint and we will be there. Yeah, and we already said that we are encouraging applicants to review each other by the review bon bonus and we are also having now the, the re project review wetness day whereas um, once a week this um, this RSS feed from Drupal planets um, where um, a project sitting in the application queue is promoted and said hey if you want it review it and we are also thinking about a kind of application queue spotlight so we can show people who doing re who, who are doing reviews regularly and say hey these people are awesome and we hope that by doing this uh, more people want to get into this because they c simply can make their self a name and they can get known by this so finally let's come to the point so the, the stuff that you actually should remember about the key messages are everyone of you can publish code directly sandbox projects are also a kind of contribution because dump your code if you don't want to maintain it okay leave it in a sandbox please if you want to maintain it come to us in the application queue then we need help really we need your help to review project applications and the third point is that review automation must be the future because if the count of reviewers doesn't rise with the counts of applicants, we have a huge problem in the queue. We have also um, a list of resources where you can, s where you can join us and um, figure out how to review applications, find out more, more information about the issue queue itself. And we also have a Drupal review account on Twitter where we are always tweeting about the uh, discussions and and the newest projects going on in the application queue. So please follow it so you will remember that you want to help us. So any questions left? Hi. Uh, my name is Benjamin Melanson and I actually also have um, the, uh, the privilege of, of promoting projects to full Git projects. Um, so to the extent that there's a problem, and I think there, there still is one, I am uh, a large part of it because uh, I have been very absent in involvement and in actually even just checking, you know, handling the things that are already RTBC'd. But I think we just have a fundamental um, inequality that's sort of untenable in that we expect more from brand new um, contributors of projects than we expect of people who have projects. I have 10 projects or whatever I have. Um, I'm clearly not maintaining them well if I don't remember the exact number. Um, and you know, I can pop off a project right that, no review whatsoever. Um, I'm not, you know, one doesn't have to be up on the latest security APIs or anything to just do that. Um, but also, I'm, I'm invested in Drupal. I'm not going to walk away if someone says, well, hold on, like, let's, you know, 
look at your project a little more. If someone just sits and gets nothing, um, so that then that's really, really bad first experience for people's like first big involvement. I do think we have to be much clearer that your project is fully usable as a sandbox project and all of that. It is a, a different regime. Um, but th there's just that fundamental inequality that personally I would love us to move towards a system where every project needed this, some kind of process to become a full project. And then we're all in the same boat together and all the module developers who and people who have the grandfathered access from like the days of CVS um, who say, oh, hell no, I never want to go through this process. Well, now they have to get involved and make it work for everybody. Um, that's considered untenable because that would quadruple or some 10 times or more, 20 times the number of projects that we have to review. Um, but honestly, I, I really feel that we have an inequality between new contributors and existing contributors that I'd rather see us thrown into a sinking boat together than just sort of have um, new people like um, waver like this. Um, but they've been done an awesome job and so please everyone get involved in the queue and let's try to treat the new people as great as possible. But there's middle ground where the automated reviews can start to apply to um, all projects. So these are the, you know, anything that can be done to make the make it equal between existing contributors and new contributors, um, I think that's a huge step forward and um, I'm gonna keep trying to help, thanks. Thanks. Yep. You're quite right about that inequality, but I think there's one aspect to it. I think we have to be a bit more pushy to new contributors because there are, there are the old foxes like you that are around and then basically know what they're doing they're not doing very, very critical mistakes. Of, of course, it's possible that an experienced Drupal developer will have a security issue in his or her module, but it's less likely. And I think we have to be a bit pushy and a bit um, nitpicky about new contributors because we do it only once. We could change that and have this thinking boat. We are all thinking all modules have to go through that process, but... Um, it's currently, we don't have the resources for that, so it's not quite sustainable. We, have, we haven't figured that out. But on the other hand, maybe it attracts a lot of reviewers. If every full project has to go through that application, through that review, more people would be in the queue and more people would maybe review, maybe that would be better. Um, I guess the main other thing I would suggest as far as the, the all equal approach is that there not be the, the Git um, administrator able to approve provision anymore, but anyone else who has one or maybe three projects that already can is is automatically without any application able to approve other people's, um, but that there be like a public record of that, so that your name is attached to a project, so that everyone has their reputation staked on the project they approve, and it should still you know have a review process and all. But we all, again. We, we remove this bottleneck that you know, basically makes us the target of, of the IR. It's like, no, this is how the Drupal community works. You have a project to apply. Anybody with a project in Drupal can approve it. Um, and again, it, you have to have more people understand that anyone in Drupal can um, review your project. So putting more literature up front in the review application process that, you know, Drupal is done as a community. Here's how you get involved in the community and get someone to review yours, of course, doing your own reviews. But all of this is overlap, but if you know, you just know that anyone in Drupal can do it, it's up to you to to you know help make that happen. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's teaching people how this project should work. And that for someone who is an established Drupal developer, it's not hard to find someone to sign off on their project mm -hmm. that'll go like that. So I don't think it'd be onerous for established people and but it would actually be at least be technically equal. Mm, I think that's a good comment, actually. Um, I was just thinking that I'm not sure if all users on Drupal.org are on the same page, for example, regarding duplication and fragmentation. So we have quite some applications that we just close and say, hey, please talk to that maintainer, that project already exists. Please collaborate. Please do not create another few slideshow module. Please don't, don't do it. And yeah, that might be a problem because other users disagree to say the more modules the better the more contributors the better and they just would approve someone 
which might not be desired by the overall community. So, yeah. But that's sort of the spot where the inequality galls people the most because, yeah, if you're already out there, if you're, once you get through the process with some other module, then you can release that review slideshow. So these, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I, I honestly think that for things like that where there's no way, like right now, anything that's a security issue mm -hmm. or even API issues, there's, it's feasible that someone will go into a module, you know, will we'll go into a module that's already out there and say, no, this one is shut down or whatever if it doesn't live up to it. There's no way that's going to happen. The community is not going to go and say, tell me that, I, that the module I made is a duplicate and has to be shut down. And so that is an inequality that we're facing new people to. That I, I, I think we just can't do that. If we don't want mm. duplicate projects, then we have to have a community-wide thing. We can't, we can't put gates on new contributors that we don't even pretend to ever put on existing contributors. And so if we as a community want to prevent duplicate projects, then we have to we have to put that gate up separately. But I th I think I think that's key, and I think we have to drop that gate from the project review process. Um, mm -hmm. We can we can encourage, we can nudge, um, but I I don't think we can enforce it as an absolute gate because yeah. it's it's just not equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what happens if I submit the project? Then you cannot. <laughs> accept it because it has some issues? Do I have to reapply or what happens next? So the, the issue um, has a comment follow-up. I post a comment and I say you have to fix this, you have to fix that because that's a security issue and I put it as needs work. Then you work on your project, commit the new code and then you say hey I fixed that, I'm ready to review again and set it back to needs review in a comment after that. It's just the, the standard issue queue workflow as we are using on other modules just a little uh, reused for project for applications. Any other questions or other useful comments? Uh, <coughs> yeah, first of all, uh, thanks for all the uh, great work. Um, I think it's, it's amazing what you guys pull off there. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I think in general it's, it's possible to get your project approved because I'll, I don't know if that comment was by, 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 uh, by me. I think I got through in 10 days or something like that. Um, but definitely the thing is a more centralized uh, documentation because at some point I read with the review bonus program that I shouldn't like um, uh, review uh, one project a couple of times and then I thought well that's weird because I mean I already know the project then the module and it would be better if I'll just stick to it and see okay does the um, does the owner actually come back to the stuff that I suggested mm. and then I found another post and I basically said that um, and yep. I also think it's oh, I was shocked by the amount of projects that were uh, um, committed where people were just lacking basic basic stuff like wrong git URL or um, <laughs> they had 50 lines and they were like why is my project not being uh, being accepted, yeah. uh, or, or just basic checklist stuff, and so um, I would just go there and say, well, please go to that link, read it all, and uh, don't come back. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you I, can't I, say don't come back. Yeah, well, but <laughs> it's, um, I mean, I, I reviewed a couple of projects, and basically, uh, I think five times I just wrote the same, the same stuff, okay, your Git URL should look like this. Um, Please take a look at that. Well, your um, the, the you have coding coding guideline issues, um, and so that's just the the stuff that uh, might take a lot of work for yep. you. And um, the second point is that um, maybe there can also be a different or two different levels because what I didn't really figure out in the beginning was that it's uh, I mean with uh, with norm or when I get into the uh, bonus review program. And then um, when I have that, and when I flag it, and then you take a look at my code, and I, I just have basic stuff wrong, then I kind of wasted three reviews. On I'm I'm evil. On <laughs> no no no, not at all. Um, but uh, so so therefore I got in touch with other um, 
with other, uh, other applicants and said, okay, I reviewed your project, can you just review mine yeah. to get the basic stuff covered? And I, in, in that way, I also get the, the reviews that I need for the bonus program. Yeah. And uh, then I can just tell you, okay, can yeah. you now take a look? And I think that's a lot easier for you because yeah. you don't have to deal with the really basic stuff. And so maybe it would be a good way to, to promote that kind of uh, collaboration. Yeah, a, bi a bit more to basically say, okay, mm -hmm. if you really want to get things done, get in touch with other people <coughs> and work together, review your stuff, and then do it uh, in that way. But uh, yeah, that's just my yeah. idea. But as I said, thank thanks for all the great work. Thanks. Because of the documentation you mentioned, um, we are also planning to work on a documentation on Friday. So we really want to enhance the documentation. We want to talk about the future of the process. We also want to review some of the applications. And please, please join us. We're li really looking forward to anyone who comes. Yep. So we are not alone. <laughs> We will also yeah. we will also do some discussion about automation plans or how w we can tackle some of those issues. And wha what you mentioned is I, I started to to build those automated review tools because I was repeating myself all the time in the in the issue queue. I found the very same issues in 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 all the new projects that have applied. Then I realized people were often using the the wrong permission in the menu callbacks. And then I took a look at the example documentation for hook menu. And the default, wa the default permission was access administration pages, which totally doesn't make sense for an administration configuration. So if somebody can enter code, just visit administration pages is not enough. It's the wrong permission. And because it was in that example documentation, people were using it a lot. So overall documentation improvement for Drupal is also a, <laughs> a great help for making new contributions contributions better and more adhering to standards. Yeah. Yes, so the comment was integrating the automation stuff into Drupal org would be a huge, a huge step. I, I agree. So I think you are running out of time. So thanks all for coming. I uh, hope I see you on Friday. You have to do at least one, uh, one application or I will slap you. No, okay. <laughs> Just a joke. Uh, it's on the general venue code sprint. I don't know what room that is right now. It's on the DrupalCon website. So hope to see you there. Thanks for coming. <laughs>